So hello friends, it's me again. Um, we're going to take a quick look at baking our rigs here. Again, this goes for absolutely any rig that you've set up on any character in Lightwave, however you've done it, but of course it also has good applications specifically for rig it, where this technique comes in particularly useful. So let's see what we've got here. We've got basically a, a bit of animation here um, that we've done. Now, one of the things that we want to do often is we want to speed up the performance of our scene once we get into lighting and, you know, starting with the render setup and all of that. We also, of course, have got our rig here, and, you know, that's a lot of constraints going on that are making the movement do whatever it's doing. And even though I've never seen it myself, you know, even I can think about getting a bit twitchy about sending something off to a render farm and maybe at LWSN having a couple of the constraints not work correctly and so you get your renders back with some horrible deformation or something. The point is, once I've finished my animation, once it's final, final, finalized, I always want to bake it down before I move on to the next parts of, you know, my pipeline process. Now, of course, one easy way to do that that we're all familiar with is MDD baking, where, of course, you just take the mesh and you bake that to an MDD file. And, you know, that's fine. You can still use that with displacements and other things, but you can't use displacements in certain ways, namely via the node editor. You have to use the surface displacement node input on the surface channel. And there may be other considerations as well. In the case of Rigit, then we have, of course, got two rigs. There's the main controller rig, which is, of course, you know, what's driving our animation and on which everything is keyframed. But then we have the deform rig, which is the actual joints and bones that are deforming our character mesh. And in Rigit's case, that targets onto the controller setup. Any which way, somehow or other, we've got a deform structure of bones that have some kind of rig or constraint control associated with them to produce the animation. And what we want to do is bake that off. And it's very simple. All we do is select all of the bones that are deforming our character. So easiest just to grab the object item that is the parent of all of the bones. And you select all bones of current object. Turn on the bone x-ray there. We can see them all in place. You could bake this in a number of ways. You could just skip through each frame and manually key all of the bones for every single frame could be a bit laborious that's why I love the MF motion baker here it's a free script works on Windows Mac 3264 we enter our range in this case it's 0 to 216 for me and also we can select which channels we do or don't want to have baked off in this case with Rigit I do have you know little stretchy bones and bits and pieces going on for lots of the clever deformation stuff so I'm going to bake everything, all nine channels. Um, I just hit OK. And we can see that the MF Motion Baker goes through scanning the entire motion. And bingo, when it finishes, every item has a keyframe on every frame. We can then select any control rig that we might have. So in Rigit's case, the actual animation control rig and the IK controllers and all of that. And we can just clear them, get rid of the lot, all items and descendants. And that basically leaves us with just our deform bones with a whole bunch of FK keyframes. And what we get is, of course, a much quicker frame rate now um, because we've got no constraints anymore. There is no rig left in our scene. And that's really nice. So there we go. One thing that you will probably want to do, of course, you'll remember that I chose to bake for rotation and position and scale and everything. Now that's going to have left me with a lot of keyframes that I don't need. For instance, the fingers, they're only rotating, they're not stretching or scaling. So I've got a bunch of keyframe data there that is junk that I don't actually need. And that bloats my file size, uses more RAM, of course, makes scenes bigger and heavier and yada, yada, yada. So what you'll probably want to do after baking in this fashion is to come and clean it all up. I could have gone through each individual bone and only baked which bits it needed, but then you've got to know every single bone and it takes ages. Much quicker is to bake everything for everything and then clean it at the end. And I'm going to do that in the graph editor. What I want to do is select all bones of current object again. I'm just going to load all of their channels here. Okay, and I'm going to go through and I'm just going to select all of those channels there. Yeah, and then when I do fit them all in view here, um, and I'm going to select everything except for the very first keyframe, which in this case is keyframe 0. Um, so carefully just select all of the other keys like that. I'm going to come to my keys menu, 
come down to set key reduction threshold I'm going to set that to 0, 0.0 click OK come to keys again and punch reduce keys recursive and bingo you see a few disappeared there basically any keys that are 0, 0.0 change um, have been removed and so we can see that it's cleaned up a bunch of my extraneous channels and that's basically all there is to it so I've managed to clean my keyframes up there we can see I'm looking at the scale channels here on the um, on the root and it's pretty good you might find some I mean here's a channel that does have a teeny tiny amount of motion look at it though it's it's micrometers um, it's so incredibly small so this isn't zero variation so what I'm gonna do is just select them all and basically do the same thing again I'm gonna set my key reduction threshold to point triple zero one so movements of a tenth of a millimeter or less pretty tiny again reduce recursive and there we can see that it's cleaned up those channels that were having very tiny amounts of variation so you can either leave the reduction threshold set to 0, 0.0 if you want a perfectly accurate bake but setting it to something like 0 0.001 is normally best to get a a total total clean of your keyframes last things that you can do that are useful um, of course expressions are no longer needed so we can come over to the expressions tab and clear unused you see I've still got one expression there that's active even though it is I actually do not need it so I can again click delete for that get rid of it also in the case of the rigid deforms on the deform skeleton here there are these black and bright red bones which are mentioned in the manual which control the auto shoulder rotation those are of course reference bones and part of the control rig to an extent or at least they're part of how the deform rig solves itself so those aren't needed so we can clear those as well because those guys aren't actually deforming the mesh it's just these other bones here and that's it our deforms are baked everything runs super smooth super quick and we can be certain that there's going to be no mess ups going to a render farm or anything else we can also delete master channels because they're no longer needed you can leave them it doesn't really make much difference but if you're determined to clean your scene to its cleanest possible finish state before you go on to the next stages to prevent any possible conflicts or problems further down the line then you can take care of that sort of stuff too and that's all there is to it so I hope you found this guide helpful so that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.